Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be going through the MATLAB code used to plot, uh, calculate and plot the NACA 4-digit airfoil. If you haven't already, check out my other video um, that I'll post in the description. Uh, if the equations won't make sense unless you've seen that video or are familiar with the actual equations that go into uh, calculating the, the data points for a 4-digit airfoil. Airfoil. So let's get started. So first we want to define the uh, type of airfoil. So it's gonna, I'm going to make it a string and I'm going to call it type NACA. And in the string we'll enclose it in single quotes and I'll do a 2412 to start like that. We want to extract the values because right now this is actually just a string and it's just one value. It's just 2412. So we want to extract the values out from this type NACA string. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the M and I say init, uh, init for initial, so I'm going to do a string to double of type NACA, and I know that it's always going to be in the first uh, position, so that'll be this number here. And then in the similar sense, I'm going to do p init is equal to string to double, and I'm going to take the second value, and then the thickness init, which I call xx in my other video, but I've changed it to t here uh, because it, it's for thickness. Uh, is going to be the third and the fourth. So I'm going to go three to four. Okay, so now if I run that really quick, you can see that now I have this string here and I have and it, and it is two, four, and 12. Okay, uh, the next thing we want to do is specify the number of grid points to use. So this will be used on both the top and the bottom. So it'll actually be, um, it'll be more than 500. You'll have 500 on the upper surface and 500 on the lower surface. The program runs quickly, so you can actually have a lot of these grid points. Uh, the constants that I have from the other video, I'm just going to copy these over from my other file, uh, but they're from the video, the constants that are used in the equations. So here we have the A0, A1, A2, A3, A4. This is A4 is for the open trailing edge. This A4 is for the closed trailing edge, and we can switch them and see how it changes. So the next thing we want to do is the actual calculations. So we have these values here, but we want to put them into the actual percentage values of the airfoil properties. So for the M, I'm just going to take the M init and divide it by 100. P, I'm going to take P init divided by 10, and T is equal to T init divided by 100. Okay, the airfoil grid, I need to specify the X locations of the airfoil grid, so I'm just going to use lin space right now. You can use a more complicated um, a more complicated distribution of points that includes a cosine term, uh, but for right now this will be fine since we're using enough data points that you'll have a smooth leading edge and trailing edge. Using the cosine uh, method will give you more, uh, or will give you closer spacing towards the leading edge and the trailing edge. Uh, so here we're gonna we're gonna go from 0 to 1. Um, so that's the length of the cord, so from 0 to 1. And then we want the number of grid points here. And I'm gonna put this prime here, or single quote, to, uh, to change this from a row vector to a column vector, because I like viewing that more. So if I run this right now and I open up X with control D, you can see it's a 500 by 1. If I didn't include that, it would be a 1 by 500. Okay, so the first one we need to do is define the camber and gradient. So I am going to uh, do these in a for loop. So I'm going to do for all of the grid points. So from one in steps of one to the number of grid points. I'll end that. And then I also need to say whether it's on the front part of the airfoil, so from zero to P or from P to the end. So that's where I'm going to put these two if statements in. So if the grid point location is greater than or equal to zero, and the grid point location is less than p, then we want to do something. And then else if the grid point location is greater than or equal to p, and the grid point location is less than or equal to 1, then we want to do something else, and then I'll end that there. So in this if statement, uh, this I'm just going to code in the equation that we have in the other video. So that's just m divided by p squared times 2 times p times the location, and close that, minus the location squared, like that, and then dy, c, dx, so the derivative of the, of the camber line with respect to x, uh, is going to be equal to 2 times m divided by p squared, Okay, times p minus x i, like that. Okay, 
and then I like to tidy this up a little bit. Okay, and now if it's on the other uh, section, then we have this equation. So yi is equal to m divided by, now it's 1 minus p squared, close that, times 1 minus, open parentheses, 2 uh, times p. Sorry if this is a little boring right now. I could copy it over, but I figure if you're copying it, then we can go at the same speed. So 2 times p plus 2 times p times x i. That minus x i squared. Okay. And then the dyc dx term is 2 times m divided by 1 minus p squared, close, close, times p minus xi, like that. Okay, again, tidy this up here a little bit. And then here, I want to specify the theta, so the angle of the camber line. And that's just equal to the inverse tan of uh, dyc dxi like that. Okay, and so these are highlighted in yellow or underlined in yellow because it appears to change size uh, on every iteration loop. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to initialize these because we know how big they're, they're going to be. I'm going to initialize them just with ones or zeros, whatever you want, because uh, they're all going to change. And we know that they're going to be the size 500 by one for all of these. And when I say one, I mean it ones. And again, grid points one, and then also for theta, grid points one. Okay, and now we have all this set up here. So if we run that, there should be no errors and we get these over here, theta 500 by one, yc 500 by one. Okay, that's all good. Now for the thickness distribution, um, we wanna go for, again, all the grid points. So one steps of one to all the grid points. I'm gonna end it there. And then in here, we know that the first term, so term zero is the square root of x term. So I'm gonna say a zero right, a zero, okay, times the square root of the x term. Term one is going to be a one times just x. Term two is equal to a two times x squared. Term three is equal to a three times x cubed. There we go. Term four is equal to a four times x to the fourth. Okay, and then the thickness distribution yt is equal to 5 times t, so it's actually 1 over 0.2, which is just 5, so 5 times t times term 0 plus term 1 plus term 2 plus term 3 plus term 4, okay? And that's the thickness distribution. And again, we know how big this is going to be, so we can initialize it up here, 1's grid points 1, okay? And then now we need to do the upper surface points and then the lower surface points. So again, we want for all the grid points like this. And, and then also down here, we also want for all the grid points. Okay, so in here, we wanna calculate the X upper locations. XI is equal to the initial one. And now we need to take into account the camber line with the thickness. So YTI times sine of theta i, and y upper of i is equal to the camber line of i plus y t i times cosine of theta i, okay? And now the lower surface points, similarly, you have x lower, that's not a one, that's an l, is equal to x i, so location plus the thickness, y t i times sine theta i, like that, and y lower i is equal to y of the camber line minus y t i times cosine of theta i. Okay, now similarly for these, we can initialize these x u is equal to ones with the grid points one, y upper is ones, grid points one, and the lower surfaces we have x l is equal to one, grid points one, and the y lower is ones, grid points one, like that. Okay, and then now the last thing to do is actually plot the airfoil. So I'm gonna plot it on figure one 
I'm going to hold it on, put the grid on, put the axis to equal, and you'll see I can show you why that makes sense to do. And then we'll plot the upper and the in, I'll plot the upper in red, in a red line, and I'll plot the lower in a black line like this. And if I save it and I run it, you can see that this plots the upper in red, the lower in black, and you have the 2412 plotted. If I didn't take the axis equal, if I turn that off and I run it again, you can see it looks really weird because it's it's just plotting whatever here with whatever axis makes sense uh, if you weren't plotting an airfoil. But if you want to see what the actual airfoil looks like, you should put axis equal on, and then you can see it's plotting here. If I want to change the airfoil that I'm looking at, I can go up here and just change this to, we'll go to, whoops, it needs to be a uh, four digits. So this is a 0012 is a symmetric, as you can see here. If I take this to a more extreme, a 6409, you can see, I see I put the hold on. So if I put clear all up here, then I'll get rid of it. Um, you can see a more cambered uh, airfoil here. Um, I'm going to make a MATLAB GUI uh, for this, and it's going to be taking this code and extending it to, to add some more functionality, and then that'll be in my next video. Uh, these can also be, uh, just as a quick final thing, these can be condensed into uh, something that's a little bit faster, um, and I'll just show you that right here. So if I wanted to condense this one, I would say that yt is equal to 5 uh, times t, and then I want to use the dot operator, so dot times a0 dot times the square root of x, okay, plus a1 dot times x, plus a2, sorry, a2 dot times x dot squared, plus a3 dot times x dot cubed, and then finally a4 dot times x dot to the fourth. Okay, close that parenthesis, so that's the thickness there. We can also do that for, um, for the upper surface and the lower surface. So if I do this for the upper surface first, I'll do x upper is equal to x, and we need to put this colon in here to specify that it's all columns, or uh, sorry, all rows. And same for the yt, and then dot times sine theta. And then for y upper, we have yc plus yt, like this, dot times cos theta. Okay, and then similarly for the lower surface, we can say that the x lower is equal to x plus, oops, plus yt dot times sine theta, and y lower is equal to yc minus yt dot times cosine theta. Save that, run it, and again you can see that it gives the correct airfoil shape, and now you can, you've eliminated all this code here that you, whoops, that you don't need. Uh, and this is just being spelled incorrectly. So then we can get rid of all this. It really cleans up the code a little bit, makes it faster to calculate as well. And there you go. And then we can, again, change this to, you know, a 2412, run it, and there you go. So that's how you code up this, uh, the equations that I mentioned in my other video. Again, see the description for the link to that video if you haven't watched it, because otherwise these equations won't make sense. And keep an eye out for my GUI video for this if you're still interested, even after listening to this boring video. Thanks for watching.